I'm Robert with Nomium, and we're taking a look at Miro.com, one of our favorite tools to use in virtual sessions. Now, Miro.com is a collaborative whiteboard, but as you'll see in this video, it goes much, much further than most collaborative whiteboards. This video will be longer than most, so we'll put the categories that we cover and the timestamps in the description. Now, we're going to cover the basic features of Miro as we might use it as a collaborative whiteboard. We'll also take a look at the zoom and view options. We'll take a look at some templates that I've created as well as some templates that Miro has by default that anyone can use. And we'll finally take a look at what we can do with Miro in terms of presentations and exporting PDFs. Now I have a paid Miro account, but there are a lot of free options if you don't want to pay but we do recommend if you're a facilitator running live training sessions to go ahead and give them a little bit of money for the increased functionality that you get, especially being able to save your templates to use from session to session to session. Now, another great thing about Miro is that if you have a paid account, but your participants don't have a paid account or they don't have an account at all, it allows them to join and to edit and to contribute without even signing in. But let's start simple with the basic functions that we see here on the left side of the screen. If we have a text box, it works like any other collaborative text box. I can type anything I want. I can change the font style, the font size, if it's bold, if it's underlined. I can add links. I can add bullets. I can change the font color. and I can also change some other options like the thickness of the lines, but I can also lock these if there is an element that I've created and I don't want other people to edit or change, I have the ability to save that and keep it as it is. Now, Miro really functions well with the sticky note option. We not only have different colors, but we can add a sticky note. And if we think it's too big, we can easily move that around. And as we type, on the note, the text size is automatic. And when we take a look later at the zoom and view functions of Miro, it doesn't matter if one person has a sticky note that's really large. And let's say I'm another contributor and I have a sticky note that is a different size. Let's say it's really, really small. And while it may be hard to read, if it is tiny, the zoom options do allow me to zoom in and out and having different sizes does have some different advantages when we're looking at collaboration, brainstorming, or really going deep to different strategy tools. We can copy and paste any element in Miro to recreate it if we'd like. And another great thing is if we have objects that we would like to link together, I might use this parent op object and pair it with this child object. Now, what happens later if I want to move something around, that line stays connected to show there is some kind of relationship uh, and connection between those two objects. The pin option allows us to free draw anywhere we want on the screen. Of course, we can change the font size, the line size, as well as the color. And if you download the Miro app for your tablet or your phone, or if your participants download it, it allows them to draw on the same canvas through their device. Commenting works well. If there's something I'd like to say, this is great. And it allows people to resolve that if there's an issue, if there's something that needs to be updated. And of course, I can go in and I can uh, adjust those comments uh, and some of the formatting. And I, of course, can choose to delete that comment anytime I want. And those are the basic functions of a collaborative whiteboard. One more thing is the shapes. If I would like to draw a shape around a certain area of my screen, not only does it allow me to have a shape where I can change the different colors, the different line thickness, but I can also choose to cover, or if I choose an empty filler, to just have that border around. Now, this shape is not a frame. 
but let me show you frames in just a moment. The final option in the basic tools on Miro is here near the bottom, Upload. This is one of the most useful tools you'll probably find in Miro. It gives us the option to upload almost any file we have, whether it's an Excel file, Word file, PowerPoint file, PDF, and it also allows us to upload videos which play and we can upload videos through URLs like YouTube. Here is one quick example. It's uploading the YouTube video right now. Now I can always choose to move this around. I can always choose to make this larger or smaller. And as you can see, it will play through that video just like a regular YouTube player. I've already uploaded a couple of other files. Here's an Excel file and we can zoom in on that. We can see the content, but we cannot right now edit this content. We can download it and edit it and re-upload it. But if we want to make it editable, we can import it through Google Drive or there are other options like Dropbox. When this loads through a Google Drive or other platform, we can edit it in real time and it will constantly save those changes in the original platform such as Google Drive. The other thing I'd like to look at is this PDF that I've already uploaded. When we go to this PDF, you'll see the tool options at the top. We can flip through that PDF. There we go. It does take a moment for those pages to load, but we, once they're loaded, we can flip back through them forwards and backwards without that same load time. It also gives us some other options to extract certain pages from that PDF so we don't have to upload an entire large document when we only need one or two pages. The next thing I'd like to show you is the view and the zoom options in Miro. If we take a look at the left side of the screen, I've been using the cursor mode where if I'm in an area, it might allow me to highlight or move things around. But if I want to use my cursor as a view option, it gives me this hand and I can grab the entire canvas and I can move my view around. It's not moving the objects, it's just uh, moving the view. I like to leave it on cursor because I have a trackpad on my laptop that I use and I just use my trackpad to move it around. If you take a look at the bottom right side of your Miro window, you'll notice that we can go full screen, that we can unpin certain parts of the map. Right now I have this section pinned that I'm looking at and I can move in or out using these zoom options. But again, on a trackpad, I can also use my trackpad to zoom in and out. The other great thing about this view option at the bottom is you'll notice that we have some different outlines of some different sections. Right now, we're looking at the section that I just created, but let's go to a section that I created before this video was even started. We'll zoom out there a little bit. And this is a template that I've already created for my participants in an online presentation program. If we are taking a look at an audience analysis, I might be using my team to create an audience analysis altogether so different participants can get the link. They can each come in and they can type idea number one here. Um, they can type another idea here. And of course, any of my participants, unless I've locked the element, can add sticky notes, they can copy and paste, they can link these different ideas, they can add text anywhere they want. And if they are on my canvas, they can choose to go outside of my canvas, maybe over here, and they can type other notes as they wish. They're not specifically restricted to this box that I've given them, but that is important to know in case there are some specific instructions. Now let's take a look at frames. I have built a frame which I named audience analysis and these frames that go around the content we create creates a presentation slide if we would like to use it as a presentation slide. Let's take a look at that feature. Here on the left side of the screen, I've, I've opened the frames that I have, and I have two frames built right now. 
I have one called audience analysis, and I have another one that's untitled, which we'll look at in just a moment. Now, if I want to create another frame, I might go back to some of the content that I created earlier, and I might decide to draw a custom frame around that content. I can give it a name. I can use some different grouping options that we won't go into today, and of course I can lock it. And now what happens when I go back to viewing my frames, I now have a new custom frame. Imagine PowerPoint where you had slide one, slide two, and slide three. This is what framing can do, not only for when you go into presentation mode, which we haven't seen yet, but it also allows you to see the different groupings you've created and you can export these frames as PDFs and other files. Maybe I want to move custom frame up to the top. And so if I'm going into presentation mode later, it's going to go to the custom frame that you saw first, then it would go to that audience analysis frame, and then it would go to this untitled frame. Let's go back over. Another great zoom option we'll use here. We go over here to the right side and say, let's go back to this section. So it's easy for me to jump back and forth to different sections of that whiteboard of that canvas. Now, imagine that I had some participants doing their audience analysis, and I didn't want to create an entire different Miro board. I wanted them to stay on the same canvas, but I still wanted them to do something that they can't see yet. What I've done over here in the next section of my canvas is I've just created a shape. It's a gray box that goes over my content. And again, I can choose to lock or unlock that if I don't want my participants peeking under, if they actually see uh, this gray box or they might see in the zoom and view section, those blue icons. But I'm gonna go ahead and go in here now and delete that shape, which was over my new template, our proposals. Just like our audience analysis template, I might have my participants discuss their ideas for marketing proposals, product proposals, uh, consulting proposals. And again, these are built around a specific frame. And when I go back into my frame view, now you can see it's no longer that gray box because I've taken that physical shape away. Now that you've seen a template that I've created, let's take a look at some of the built-in templates that Miro has that you might want to use, and they probably will save you some time than building your own templates as I have. We'll go to a blank section on the canvas, We'll go to the left side of our menu, and this opens our templates. Now, they are a lot of templates, so be careful not to get overwhelmed, but go through some of these templates and find a design that might match the strategy or the brainstorming session or whatever visual you would like to create. One of the most common ones is just brain writing for brainstorming and ideation. We're going to add that. And this creates already a box of sticky notes. And we have participant one, two, three, four, five, and we can give them idea one, two, three. And this, again, allows us, when we go into our edit mode, to move different sticky notes around into different sections. We can, we can decide to type, we can decide to edit. And this is just a great option where you may not need this many sticky notes, but you can group a bunch of them together. Let's say I click this row, and I'm just going to delete all of those that I chose. I can edit this very easily. Now, to create another template example, one of them I like is the mind map. I'm going to add one of those. And what you'll see here is we might have a large topic such as food, and we have some subtopics, for example, we might have fast food, we might have healthy food, and this allows me as an individual to create a mind map for a presentation, for example, or it allows my participants to work together, or if I'm leading the conversation on a virtual platform, they can be entering their ideas as I lead that session. Now, one of the other great things about Miro is that it has a lot of options, but those options are usually pretty easy to find. Down here on the right side next to our view menu, we have the different functions menu for the mind map that we're in. If I hit enter, 
it allows me to create another subtopic. Expensive food could be another subtopic. And if I would like to add a new child node, let's go up here to healthy food. It doesn't have any examples of healthy food. So I've got that clicked. I'm going to hit tab. And now I have a new child. And here I'm going to add another new child node. Other things we can do are reassigning by using command and drag. And we can use the arrow options and we can just escape and get out of that specific section or that specific node that we're working with. Now that we've seen some templates and we've seen some frames, let's take a quick look at the presentation option. When I go to the bottom left side of my menu, I can see the different frames that I've already created. Now the mind map that we just saw does not have a frame. And if I want one, I can click add a new frame here and choose what is in view or not in view. I can create that or I can always exit out of that menu and I can go to the default frames option on the left. Once I go into presentation mode, let's say I go to my frames. I'm going to choose this first frame, but then I'm going to go down here to presentation mode. You can see here at the bottom, I'm on frame one of four, and I can share this screen, or I can share part of my screen, include this frame, I can talk about it, and then I can go to my next one as I present live to my audience and my participants. As we exit presentation mode, there's another great thing we can do, is we can choose voting. Now, I love voting because once my participants have added their different ideas, I might choose to call this first vote, choose the best proposal. I can allow them to have maybe one minute for voting, five minutes for voting, or I can manually change that to just three minutes for voting. Or if it's a long-term project, I can give them hours and hours and hours to vote. How many votes? I only want my participants to choose their top three, and I don't want them to be able to vote on this entire board, so I'm going to go and change this. Um, let's go to the key proposals section and I only want my participants to vote for things and sticky notes in that specific area and as you'll see here I can have them vote for sticky notes text shapes cards images or if I want to limit it only to those sticky notes then that's exactly what I'll do I'll start voting now and my participants have the voting options come up on their screen and it allows them to go into this section and physically click on which sticky notes they want to vote for. The final thing we'll look at with Miro is our save options. If you go up here to the top, you can export this board and you can see you can save it as an image, a PDF, you can save it as a template, you can export it as a spreadsheet, you can embed it. And using and reusing these different Miro templates and different boards is a wonderful option to keep you from recreating your work over and over and over. The best way to get used to Miro is try it. Try out the functions, try out the templates, try out the options, see what works best for you. And if you have a team that you'll work with that has never used Miro, create an example Miro board. And in the pre-work, ask them to do three things. Make a sticky, add some text, and change the color and move things around. Get them used to Miro with some of the basic options that they can use to collaborate. And when you meet for your live session for the first time, that very quick learning curve hopefully is over. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, as always, we'd love to hear from you.